Hello everyone, The Bad Raven here. Uh, I come to you today with another great uh, review of uh, an older movie uh, from the time period you guessed. I always have my time <laughs> movies from lately is the 80s. And uh, I can't believe it's took me a while since I've had this channel to even do this movie as a review of this movie. Because it's, it's a movie that's really uh, had a great place in my heart as far as the story uh, it's about space, you know, it's about adventure, it's about love, it's got a lot of story, it's about a kid that uh, never gets, uh, you know, uh, the breaks and finally something happens to him and he gets out of his small little trailer park town. So this movie uh, really spoke to me, especially after Star Wars and all the other space movies that I, I co uh, grew up to love. Uh, this movie took it another step, you know, as I got older, I've become a teenager and everything, that uh, it really was a great uh, uplifting movie for me. So um, I'll, uh, I got several different types of media I've got this movie on. So I'll show you all them for, before I start actually going into the review of the movie. So uh, first of all, this is the VHS tape of... Um, the Last Starfighter. The movie I've been talking about is The Last Starfighter. I bought this off eBay. It says, looks like 1998. It's still in plastic. I've never opened it. Um, it says it's from a movie mogul, $24.95, suggested list price. So they saw it had no sell for $19.98, whoever did at the time. I didn't pay that much for it. This was just somebody, I guess, just sold it out of a collection or something. But I, I paid a lot less for it. But I love that uh, VHS box. I mean, that VHS box says it all. I don't know if you can see it there good. It's got the uh, MCA written on the plastic. Um, and that's the back of it. It doesn't have much artwork, but it does have stuff telling about the story. Um, it is, I mean, VHS is what I first saw it on. I wanted to get the very first release of this movie. And... Uh, what can I say? Um, I had to, you know, had to get it on VHS because of that. I uh, I particularly love it, uh, hearing it play in the VHS machine. If I had it where I could play it, that has been in the old days, hearing it roar in the VHS machine. But uh, I, I went ahead and got this one because it was one of the first releases of it on VHS. Also, I showed you this one before of it um, when I did the CED player uh, review you can uh, I may link it here uh, showing the CED review where I'll actually play this in my CED player it's CED player not uh, not to be confused with laser player. I do not have this in laser disc uh, my son told me I should get it in laser disc and DVD For some reason I don't have the DVD of this I must have you know this my bar it years ago and never got it back nonetheless I love this uh, big artwork on this so that's the reason I bought this more than actually watching the movie, even though I can play it. Skip some on the actual thing. It has a little bit of uh, like laser rod or whatever. It's like a record inside, so that's uh, I guess it wouldn't be a laser rod, but it's got some imperfections. But I love the big artwork. And on the back, we got the um, Centauri and uh, Maggie, and of course, uh, Lance Guest. Uh, uh, plays, um, let me see what his name is in the movie, Alec Rogan. I should know that already, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's uh, uh, Lance Gass. Dan O'Hurley is the one that plays Riggs. He, he's uh, the alien he meets in the movie, and he's all up in makeup. He's a guy from Police Academy as the sergeant, uh, the kind of the goofy sergeant. Uh, he played that character. Catherine Mary Stewart is Maggie, his girlfriend. She's been in a lot of other 80s movies. Um, Night of the Comet being one of them. And um, Centauri, of course, is Robert Preston. That's him. He uh, He's in this movie also. Uh, the director uh, wanted him, uh, the music man, he said to be the, uh, the top character uh, Centauri was, and he was in the music man. And uh, he got to uh, add him, and he was really happy that he got him in this movie. But that's the CD of it. And I'm not done yet about showing the 
things I've got it in. I also got it in the defunct HD DVD format. Uh, when I was the, the way back when we had to uh, fight for our high definition when the war came and we fought the Blu-ray and the HDVD war. I fell on the wrong side of this and had to face the knowledge that this movie would never get uh, uh, the love it deserved on my HDDV player, even though it does work and I can't play it on there. But uh, I uh, got it on in that because at the time, I don't know if it was available on Blu-ray at the time, so I had to get the format that had this on it, of course. But I like the you know, using the original uh, poster, and I do have this poster in my collection. I'll have to, uh, I don't know if I've showed you it yet, but I'll have to show you that. It's got um, <clears throat> several special features and stuff on the back, artwork. I love the red. I always like the red part of the HD DVD format. Uh, it didn't win the format war, unfortunately. We had to surrender to the boys in blue. But uh, nonetheless, that's it, and then I think you also had some discard in there. Really cool. I don't know if you can see that. But that's, uh, I have played that several times. It's still a great picture quality. It's still HD. Anyway, would you, anyway you cut it. Now this one is the, I finally upgraded this with the 25th anniversary well, long back, so it's way past the 25th anniversary now. But, uh, I think it's came out in 1984. I'll post it here if I'm wrong or I may just go ahead and post it anyway for the actual release date of it. But this has a different cover. I guess they wanted to do something different, make it a little more pleasing to the younger crowd to come out, but still a nice, a nice uh, new uh, thing with the gun star beside, behind him. And uh, it's got uh, pretty much all the special features from the HD DVD version onto this one. It's got an introduction by Lance Guest, you know, who plays Alex Rogan and everything on it. But that is my um, uh, last version of uh, the movie I got it on. I do not have a DVD, like I said, I do not have a laser disc. I may have to upgrade eventually. You might say, why do that? Why have it on every format? I don't know. I just like putting them on and having the movies I love on all kinds of formats. It's just a thing. I don't know. But um, getting back to the movie and uh, what I was going through in the 80s. You know, I was growing up in the 80s. I'd say 84, I was, see, 17, 17, 17, I was about 17 years old. Maybe about 16. About 16 years old in that range. And um, I uh, just saw this. I don't think I had the chance to watch it on uh, the big screen. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I missed this movie at the theaters. He's a, he, uh, Alex Rogan, lives in a trailer park, uh, the Starlight Starbright uh, trailer park uh, in California, and uh, they're kind of in a mountainous area. His mother's like the manager of the trailer park, and they live in a trailer there, and he helps her with the place and everything. He's getting out of school, and he's wanting to go to college and everything. They don't have much money to go and he's expecting a letter from uh, like financial aid or something to see if he can get into college but uh he it's really setting the weird the the director of this is um um the guy that played michael myers in the uh the original halloween um nick castle nick castle played the original uh Michael Myers in the original Halloween movie of uh, John Carpenter's. So they, uh, Nick Castle and uh, John Carpenter went to film school together and he got Nick Castle to be in his movie Halloween as the, the shape as Michael Myers. So Nick Castle had the film in school too so he he became a director also and he, this is one of his first, not, not the first, but one of his first big budget uh, movies that he came out with. And uh, I was shocked when I found out he was Michael Myers at one time, and uh, he's a very well, he directs this movie very well, I think. He said he wanted to bring the character into, like, not the suburban uh, area like, you know, Steven Spielberg did with E.T., with uh, with the kids all living close together, which, you know, they, they still live close here, but they were like a more, a, a richer uh, neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? And uh, this one, they're like in trailers and they're in a rural area 
and uh, the trailer park. It's, you know, not a lot of wealthy people, you know what I'm saying? So he wanted that type of, uh, uh, how can you say it, that kind of atmosphere for this movie. And uh, there's a store just right beside the Starlight, Starbright uh, uh, trailer park. And uh, at this store, they have an little outside area, picnic area, and they've got a arcade game. See, and I love arcade, so that really pulled me into this movie too. They had an arcade game called The Last Starfighter. And Alex, when he was bored and had nothing to do, and not with his girlfriend Maggie, um, he would go up there and play it, you know, and it was like, join the, the Federation and fight the evil Emperor Zor Zerg. Uh, uh, not Zerg, maybe Zorg. Zorg. I think Zerg is from um, Toy Story. But, uh, and they fight the um, Armada. I can't think of the first name of the Armada. Uh, but um, the Zorg Armada, maybe. But anyway, he, uh, they said, it says all this introduction, and he's like him flying the ship, and he fights all these. Uh, spaceships and stuff like he's uh, helping the the planet out of um Rom not romulan i'm getting a lot of movies mixed up here with names um we have this the story begins with uh, alex rogan he lives in the the uh, uh trailer park out on the outskirts of town um uh, his mother is the trailer park uh like manager of and he helps her and he's going to school and everything well he He's out of school and he's waiting for a loan for to be able to go to college and he's waiting to see if he's going to be able to get out of the out of that small rural area, you know, where he lives. He wants to have bigger and better things to see the world, you know, he's got big, you know, prospects ahead that he wants to do. Well, um, while he's in there, there's a, an arcade game out by the little the store right next to the, the trailer park that he, lives, uh, that he lives at, the Starlight Starbright Trailer Park. So, the, the store has an arcade game out from it called The Last Starfighter, or called Starfighter, and uh, he plays it and he gets really good at it. One day he beats like the whole entire game, and he's like uh, really happy that he's beat the record and everything like that, and he go home to tell his mom how good he's done, and she's done opened up this envelope that he got through the mail that says that he's... Uh, not got the loan and he can't go to college that he wants to go to. He has to go to the, like the state college that's close to home, which he doesn't want to go to. But anyway, he uh, he's like all depressed and everything. And then uh, this spaceship or car kind of car pulls up and wants to know who the person that beat the game is, where they're at. And, and it's Centauri. And he tells him he's the one that beat the um, Alex tells him he's the one that beat the game. And he wants to... Uh, like uh, let him uh, come with him so he wants to like give him a reward or something he ends up taking them to Rylos which is the planet um, where uh, Centauri lives you know his car turns into a spaceship they go to Rylos and uh, he tells them that he has been picked to be a, a starfighter and they need him to fight the Kodan Armada uh, against Xur uh, so that's what the game was talking to him about too. You know, the game, the game was based on him being a starfighter fighting the same uh, group. So uh, it was kind of like a recruiting tool, tool by Zentari, which actually they got put there at the uh, Starlight, uh, Starbright uh, uh, Trailer Park store by accident. It was supposed to be in Las Vegas, he says. Zentari just says, and he uh, he uh, by chance became. Uh, Alex became really good at it and was able to beat it. So they needed him to fight all these uh, things. Um, these uh, uh, Thordon Armada and uh, or Kodon Armada, sorry, and uh, and Zer. So um, he gets up in the in their, gets in Rylos and he doesn't want to. He don't. He's scared, you know, of course. So it's all about, it's kind of like they, they used, I think what the Nick Castle said, what they used on the uh, movie, it's kind of like the Excalibur, like the sword I tell you about in the, the Excalibur movie where he's pulling Excalibur out of the stone. That's how they know he's the king. It's because he's able to pull the Excalibur out. They made the arcade game be Excalibur. And like 
uh, Alex was able to play and beat the game and be so good and master it, he was like the king of the game, which made them be able to find him, uh, Zentari to find him and take him to the planet to save the save the planet of of uh, that they're on, and uh, they uh, know that it's going to have it's going to help Earth too because he, if he takes over their planet, he'll be coming uh, Zer will be coming there to you know take all them out too. So it's it's a big epic uh, you know. Thing where he's having to deal with uh, uh, being on another planet and trying to help them out and wanting to come back to his girlfriend Maggie and uh, Alex is wanting to come back to her and everything so they have to really uh, go through a lot of different things and there's like a beta unit that gets sent back in place of Alex too and it's really got a lot of comedy in it with that because uh, Maggie doesn't know that's not Alex it's like a perfect copy of him it's like a little robot, I mean, not a little robot, the same robot as him, it looks just like him. And it doesn't know how to act like a, a teenager or nothing like that, so it comes a lot of mischief in there. So um, it really it really has a lot of different things. It's got its comedy, it's got its action, it's got its love story. It's got everything you would want in a movie. It may be a little slow in parts, you know, and he's got a little brother in it too, and they all have their little, little parts in this movie that really... Uh, set it apart from all the other top just random 80s movies. I like it that it doesn't really uh, just latch on to one genre. It tries to be its own thing. It tries to uh, give you a, a totally different uh, look of, of, of uh, what would happen, you know, with a lower income type of, of a teenager being sucked into this uh, this uh, video game style of, uh, of uh, adventure. So, I mean, I think you can, would not go wrong to, not to watch if you haven't already seen it. I mean, I, I love this movie, and I think it uh, it's a movie that a lot of the next generation would watch if they would sit down long enough and put their phones down and be able to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, my son likes it, and uh, it's a uh, and he's a uh, just 16, but he he uh, he likes a lot of 80s stuff though. But uh, we both enjoy this movie, and that's why I've got multiple copies of it on all the th different types of uh, media. So, uh, you give it a chance. Uh, uh, watch it and see what you think. And if you've already watched it, I, I hope some of you have. If you didn't like it, put it in the comments. Tell me what you think, why you didn't like it. If you do like it, you think it's a classic. And I wish they'd make a sequel to it. It needs a sequel. It's screaming for a sequel. Bring Lance Guest back. Bring, bring Catherine Mary Stewart back. Uh, they would be, you know, let them be the parents or the grandparents to the next generation of uh, helping Rylos and, and uh, helping against Zer and all of them. Uh, I think, uh, and the Kodan Armada, I think it would be really, really, really cool if they was to do that. You know, Last Starfighter Part 2 or Last Star Far The Last Starfighter of the Next Generation or, or something like that, you know, abbreviate it, whatever you want to do, but have it, have it revisit it. But like I said, put your uh, comments in there and uh, uh, like this video if you want to, subscribe if you want to. Uh, we've got uh, we're gonna have all kinds of videos like this, like I said, and we and we enjoy talking about these older movies because you know the, it's kind of being lost on people that these movies exist. We get so many reboots and uh, all that that, that these are older movies that have really good stories get kind of tossed off by the you know because they may have arcade games in them, something from the 80s that are not around anymore. It might look dated. But I mean, it's still got a deep, deep, deep story meaning inside of it, and I, 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 I uh, implore you to watch it if you if you haven't, and uh, give it a second chance if you didn't like it. But uh, leave comments uh, about anything about this movie, about future movies, about my other videos. I, I I appreciate it. I mean, I've had a lot more comments lately, and I've tried to answer every one of them for you. And uh, we like to say, to let you know that, uh, to remember that the, the Bad Raven is your friend and he's here to uh, help you uh, with uh, your movie choices if you uh, give him a chance and uh, give me a chance. Uh, so uh, we like to let you go and uh, it's kind of running along here. So we'll talk to you later and goodbye. <laughs>